Namaste everyone. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I wish to talk about two techniques related to Navamsha, the ninth divisional chart, also known as T9, which I feel is very important technique. And I myself personally cannot imagine analyzing a horoscope without these two techniques. And in the end of the video, I will also give you a synopsis of every planet being placed in different Navamshas, what they don't give you. We know, you know, like this planet gives this result, etc. But we hardly know which planet doesn't give which result. That is very important. That we will see in the second half of the video. So, second, last, in the end of the video. So, let's start quickly. Namamsha is a divisional chart. It is the ninth divisional chart where the Rashi is divided into nine parts. And so one Rashi is divided into nine parts. All the 12 Rashi is divided into nine parts make 108 Navamshas. In any astrology software, you will get a Navamsha chart. Hmm? I'm pretty sure all of you know about before. My first technique is whenever you analyze a now chart, whenever you analyze a horoscope, you see a planet. That planet will be situated in a particular house in the D1 chart. But to decide what result that planet will give, that decision cannot be made only based on the planetary placement of Rashi. To analyze any result in astrology, you have to see connections more than one house. When you use a set of houses, it clarifies or it makes it more clear what type of result the planet is going to give. And exactly this is the first thing that I want to talk about. You want to analyze a planet, check in which house that planet is situated. You get the house. Now you go back to Navaj and check where the planet is situated in Navaj. Whichever Rashi the planet is situated in Navaj, you see which house have that Rashi in D1 chart. And this makes, this gives you two houses. The planet gives the result according to these two houses only. And this clarifies you the result the planet is supposed to give. I will clear one thing here beforehand so that it causes no confusion to you. That I am not talking about the houses in D9 chart. I am saying check in which Navamsha Rashi planet is situated and see which house in Rashi chart, D1 chart, that Rashi is following. Taking the planet from D1, D9 to D1. I am, I will give you an example. Suppose, let's take horoscope itself. Better to understand. Take this chart. In this chart, take Ketu. Ketu is situated in the second house. Okay. Ketu in the second house can be good also. Or it can be bad also. How do you decide it is good or bad? You check the Navanj of Ketu. Ketu in Navanj is situated in Cancer. 
Hmm? Now you see in D1 Rashi where this cancer is situated. This cancer is situated in the 10th house of the Rashi chart. So the K2 gives the result of the 10th house and 2nd house. This is a connection between two good houses. Hence this K2 in his Dasha Antar Dasha, whenever this K2 gets activated either by Dasha Antar Dasha or the transit of Jupiter or Saturn over K2, the aspect of transiting Jupiter or Saturn over K2 or the Antar Dasha of K2 in the other planets, etc. Other planets, Dasha, etc. K2 will give money, which is indicated from the second house through profession, which is indicated through the 10th house. So this K2 makes a combination which gives you good income and good money through profession. Because when you take, when you seek check K2 in Navamsha, it is in Cancer, which is the 10th house of Divancha. Take another example, take Saturn. Saturn is situated in the fourth house in Rashi chart in Capricorn Rashi. When you see Navamsha, you find Saturn is situated in Cancer, which is the 10th house of Rashi chart. Cancer is the fourth house of the Navamsha, Navamsha chart, that doesn't matter. Saturn is in the 10th house of Rashi chart. 10th house indicates karma. 4th house indicates home. So Saturn shows great karma related to home, property, mother and all the significations of the 4th house. Because Saturn is in the 4th house in Rashi and 10th house of D1 in Navamsha, it is known as Navamshaka. When you take the Navamsha position of planet back to D1, it is known as Navamshaka. Hmm? The classical name, the original name I am using, Navamsha. This particular placement of Saturn makes the Saturn a giver of Raj Yoga, a giver of name, fame, prosperity, happiness, good results. Why? Because both the houses of Saturn, of the house of D1 and also the house that it gets from D9 are positive houses. On the other hand, let's try to analyze this particular Mercury. Saturn in the fourth house is conjoined Mercury. This Mercury is in Aquarius in D9. When you see D1 chart, you find this Aquarius is in the fifth house. Mercury is giving the result of fourth house plus fifth house. This makes Mercury a good planet also. And Mercury also becomes Raji Yoga producer. Mercury also gives the good result because it is giving the result of one Kendra, fourth house from D1, and one Trikona, fifth house from D9. Now, because it is the fourth house of home, family, property, and happiness, where the Mercury is in D1, and in D9, it is the fifth house of progeny, children, education, etc. Mercury will give child fourth house happiness, fifth house child. Mercury will give the happiness of child. Fifth house intelligence, fourth house education. Mercury, Dasha, Antar, Dasha, transit will also be very good for completion of education. Taking some real charts, let's take the horoscope of Bill Gates. Bill Gates is having his seventh lord Jupiter, sorry, Mercury, sorry, Bill Gates is having his seventh lord Jupiter in the third house in Leo. Okay. In Navamsha, this Jupiter is in Taurus, 
which is the twelfth house of the Rashi chart. Third house indicates valor, courage, strength, etc. Vigor, vitality. Bill Gates had a love marriage, which is an showcase, which is a show of valor, vitality, etc. But through Navamsha, which indicates the inner implication, the hidden motive, and as I always say, Navamsha shows you that thing. Navamsha let you know those traits of a planet which you will generally ignore or which will generally go unnoticed. This is the importance of Navamsha. That's why I always say you cannot. Correctly analyze a horoscope without properly analyzing the Navamsha. Be very clear about it. Navamsha is very, very important. It is the backbone of every prediction, every analysis. Because Jupiter goes to a because Jupiter goes to Taurus in D9, that is the 12th house from the ascendant of Bill Gates. He had problems in his marriage, and as twelfth house indicates a separation, he also had separation from his spouse. Coming to another point, the moon, which is situated in the tenth house of the Rashi chart, just to explain you, because some people may not get it. I analyzed Jupiter as the seventh law. Which means the same technique you can also use for house lots. Generally, when I am teaching and when I am making videos, I don't explain such intricacies, thinking that the viewer is understanding it. But now I have clearly told Moon, which is situated in the tenth house of Pisces, when we look into Navamsha. It is in Scorpio, which is the sixth house of B1 chart. The tenth, the house planet in the tenth house moon through Navamsha comes back to the sixth house of the natal chart, which means he had to struggle in his profession. He had tough competitions in his profession. And there were lawsuits and cases filed against Bill Gates in his profession or in his professional life also, which is very true. You check how Bill Gates had to, uh, you know, go through a case proceedings, how someone threw a cake on his face and all these things. He had a strong competition and there was a cutthroat competition through which he started his company and he had to go through that cutthroat competition My, or whether microsoft had to go through that cutthroat competition up to that time when bill gates was there so because it is in the horoscope of bill gates this trait was there in the company till the time he was there Right, and why I am talking of the professional life because of moon being situated in the tenth house. So here, one more point that generally I imagine that is people will understand themselves, but explaining it, I am saying moon is in the tenth house, and in Navamsha it is in Scorpio, which comes to the sixth house, and which means it will have the problems in his problems, competition, court case litigation in his career. I am taking 10th house, which is the position of moon in B1 as the base. I'm not taking sixth house as the base, okay? This point should also be very, very clear. Let's take another example, Steve Jobs. Let's try to find about the income of the Steve Jobs. For income or money, I have to see the planets in the 11th house. If there is no planet in the 11th house, then check the 11th lot. And do as I told you. See, 
to go against the advice of guru or teacher is not considered good in vedic learnings okay jupiter is in gemini b1 when you check navamsha it is in taurus when you check taurus in b1 it is in the 10th house so jupiter situated in the 11th house makes a connection with the 10th house the connection of the 10th house and 11th house is a very great combination which makes a person highly successful in his professional life and also make the person the most prominent in his profession this is that there with apple you know there are many laptops but a macbook is a different thing there are many mobiles but iphone is a different thing that excellence that superiority in your field of work comes when there is a connection between the 10th house and the 11th house either the 10th or and the 11th lord is conjoined 10th or the 11th 10th and the 11th lord aspect each other 10th lord in the 11th house 11th lord in the 10th house this happens or this particular way a planet situated in the 11th house by the way of navamsha goes to the 10th house in short a combination between the 10th house and 11th house is a combination for professional prominence and this combination can also be checked this way using this research formula that i am giving you today hmm? another planet in the 11th house is ketu that is in gemini in rashi and when you check this ketu in navamsha this is in sagittarius which is the fifth house of the rashi chart ketu gives the result of the 11th house and fifth house any connection between the 11th house and the fifth house beat the conjunction of the 11th lord and the fifth lord 11th lord in the fifth house fifth lord in the 11th house or any aspect between the 11th lord and the fifth lord is a great dhana yoga it makes the person very rich very very rich and i am not telling this this is a classical combination and through this navamsha research technique of mine that i am sharing with you in this video right now we find that the same astrological combinations or say all astrological combinations must be checked through this rule also through the navamsha connection of ketu to the ninth house as ketu is already situated to the fifth house and as in the ninth rashi through the navamsha connection of ketu to the fifth house whereas ketu is already situated in the 11th house of steve jobs chart this makes steve jobs a very rich person that was true for his case as you know the another thing that i want to talk about it is related to the same technique this is another layer of this particular technique hmm? that is your approach your approach for towards anything say let, let's take an example you want to desperately marry someone you get married to them for some time there will be a honeymoon certainly excitement period what i say when you join a new job there is an excitement you are very happy and very passionate about the work but after some time you are used to it and then your approach changes this generally happens when you go through the dashantar dashaft plan what is that changed approach is also revealed through this particular technique i'll give you an example take sun sun is in the 7th house of b1 chart okay it relates to marriage b1 is my base in navamsha it goes to capricorn which is the 6th house of b1 chart gradually as the person settles in his marriage 
after a major sun dasha or antar dasha. I'm using the word major dasha or antar dasha. Not every dasha antar dasha makes this change. After the major dasha antar dasha of sun, the approach of the person will change to an approach of competition, struggle, hardships in marriage. This is generally done by the, this is I generally do with respect of Lagna Lord. In the chart of Steve Jobs, Sun is the Lagna Lord, which is situated in the seventh house. Hmm? That means the person is very passionate about business, dealing with people, dealing with masses and very passionate about innovation. Very passionate about business because Lagna Lord is in the seventh house and very passionate about changing the world, etc. Because it is in the sign of Aquarius, which denotes the, you know, world Vishubandutva, the friendship and the betterment of the world indicated by Aquarius. Now, when I go to Navamsha, I find this sun in Capricorn, which is the sixth house of the Rashi chart. Once the person have done that innovation, have started his business, have innovated the thing for the betterment of the world, once he have achieved it, what will be his approach? His approach will be of competition, struggle, etc. Because Lagana Lord also indicates the life. It also indicates what happens to the person after he have achieved his life goal. As the sun is in Capricorn Navamsha, which is the sixth house of D1 chart. Steve Jobs, after he have launched his product, changed the world and went on the top of his professional career, he got a lethal disease. He got pancreatic cancer, indicated by the sixth house. Right. So this is the another use of this particular technique. You check your Lagna Lord. Check your Lagna Lord. It is in which Rashi in D9. Check where that Rashi is falling in the D1 chart. That will be your approach towards life after you succeed. Check the Navamsha of the seventh lot. Then see which Rashi it falls in. Which house it falls in when you take it back to D1 chart. That is your approach to your spouse after your honeymoon period is over and you are well settled with your spouse. Right? So the change of approach that happens over time is also indicated through this amazing, brilliant technique that I have just told. Now what? Now the second, the second thing that I talked about earlier. What a Navamsha doesn't give you. You have to make a note for it certainly, so you can take your notebooks out and you can write it. If any planet is situated in Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius in Navamsha. Those planets don't give you anything related to profession. In the Dasha Antara Dasha of that planet or because of that planet, professional life almost remains stable. Promotion and upliftment in professional life, they don't give. Rather, they generally put an end to or a stop to the professional life or the person generally changes the profession. Hmm? The planet in the Aries, Leo and Sagittarius Navamsha doesn't promote a lot of income and is very much against the fulfillment of wishes and desires. Generally, you will see your wishes and desires related to the planet situated in Aries, Sagittarius and Leo Navamsha will not get fulfilled the way you wanted it to happen. But the planets in the 
Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius Navamsha is very good for savings, and also saves you from unnecessary troubles, giving you good health. When I say these planets give you good health, what does it mean? If you are diseased right now and the upcoming Dashantar, Dasha or the major transit is of one of these planets situated in Aries, Leo and Sagittarius, you can expect an improvement in health. If the Dashantar, Dasha is not coming, then you can check your Navamsha and find the planet situated in Aries, Leo and Sagittarius. And can do the remedy of these planets, chant the mantra of these planets, we are the gemstone of these planets to have freedom from disease. Right? This is the way you are supposed to use this particular thing. Just explained it for the reference. The planets situated in Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn Navash doesn't support marriage, they support bachelor. If you are going through the Shantar, the Shah of the planets situated in a Taurus, Capricorn or Virgo, then your marriage may get delayed. If the seventh Lord is there in these Navamshas, then the marriage is delayed. Right? They don't support marriage. They don't support a cordial relationship. But at the same point of time, they also save you from unnecessary fights and troubles. The planet in Taurus, Virgo and Capricorn, Navamsha also promotes good longevity and generally no unexpected surprise bad events happen. I'm saying no surprise bad events happen or no shock or deceivement or decide happens related to the planet situated in Taurus, Virgo and Capricorn, Navamsha. But at the same point of time, Taurus, planets in Taurus, Virgo and Capricorn, Navamsha are not very good for spiritual growth. These planets are almost like an atheist. So if the Lagna Lord is there, you may be an atheist. If the Ninth Lord is there, maybe uh, worshipping, mantra chanting, etc. is not working for you. It has to be understood this way. If you are going to get a Dashantar Dasha of a planet situated in Taurus, Virgo and Capricorn, then certainly that Dashantar Dasha may disrupt your worship schedule and that may put a halt on your spiritual progress. It has to be understood this particular thing. For those planets situated in Gemini, Libra and Aquarius in Navamsha, these planets don't support happiness. Happiness is lacking with respect to these planets, the fulfillment of duty is there. So say if the seventh Lord is situated, then in that particular scenario, the person is not getting much happiness from their marriage. They are just fulfilling their duties and not getting anything in return. Okay. The planet in Gemini, Libra and Aquarius Navamsha don't support happiness, don't support comfort, and gives you tension and sleepless nights, these planets disturb your sleep. The planet in Libra, Gemini and Aquarius Navamsha is also very detrimental to completion of education and also very detrimental to the birth of progeny. Also very detrimental to childbirth. But these planet always saves you from trouble, saves you from enemies, saves you from the diseases and gives you great competitive edge. Though you cannot complete education related to the planet who is in Gemini, Libra or Aquarius. Suppose you have Mercury in Aquarius now option. If you want to do CA, or if you want to do any business related studies, content writing, etc., you may not be able to complete it. This is what it simply means. If any planet is situated in Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces, no option. These planets don't support good health. These planets generally comes with health related issues. Right? So suppose if you have the fourth lord in the, in uh, 
cancer scorpio and pisces navamsha you may have problems related to lungs heart cholesterol bp etc right if you have mars in these navamshas cancer scorpio and pisces then generally you are going to have problems related to fear fever boils pimple fear hallucinations etc right so the planet in cancer scorpio and pisces navamsha don't support good health they make the person an underdog they don't give you much name and fame they keep you struggling for long these planets in cancer scorpio and pisces navamsha is not good for accumulation of wealth and they also create disturbances in the family life of the person generally because of these planets one gets away from their family and doesn't get any support of people and friends community no support of community also the planet situated in cancer scorpio and pisces navamsha indicates bad relationship with siblings and friends and the planet in these navamshas also support laziness as the person is timid related to the significations etc of this planet so for an example say if the lagna lord is in cancer scorpio or pisces navamsha the person is timid by nature if the ninth lord is in cancer scorpio or pisces navamsha father don't have good relationship with his siblings right <clears throat> if you are going to have the next dasha antar dasha of a planet in cancer pisces or scorpio navamsha your health may get disturbed at this particular way it has to be understood interpreted check and predictions should be made accordingly once again i will come back to my topic that navamsha is a very very important divisional chart you cannot analyze a horoscope completely without an analysis of navamsha if you don't check navamsha in your analysis of a horoscope i am very sorry to say but your analysis will be lopsided as you can miss on many major events if you don't check the navamsha navamsha is the backbone of the horoscope no technique is complete without navamsha no analysis is wholesome without navamsha basically without navamsha i can say with confidence that without navamsha if you want to make predictions it is like fooling yourself the importance of navamsha is very great that it cannot be ignored and keeping this same thing in mind i decided to teach an extensive five class course on navamsha which will have more than 10 hours of live classes live training with me where i will teach step by step how to read navamsha how to analyze navamsha how to make predictions using navamsha how to time events using navamsha how to give remedies using navamsha how to answer queries using navamsha how to find a suitable muhurta the good time using navamsha all of this right from the basics and while teaching you navamsha in these five classes more than 10 hours i will be sharing with you more than 100 of techniques and this 100 is not example this 100 is like i have written it in the notebook which 100 techniques to teach and out of those 100 techniques right now i have told you two techniques i have written 105 techniques in total so 100 techniques i will teach in the class two techniques i have told you right now three more techniques if time permits i will make another video on it or maybe sometime later right so this is a very extensive course if you want to learn navamsha in depth i will highly highly recommend you joining that course as making predictions without using navamsha is quite difficult it is an unimaginable feat impossible if i have to say thank you for watching the video and taking your time out have a good day.